Hi guys, today we're going to talk about accommodations. How to pick the right accommodation for you, uh, whether it is a student accommodation or private rent. I know many of you are starting university this year, some of you are not started yet and you're still looking for a student accommodation. So I hope this will be useful for you and if you found it useful, please subscribe to this channel. I'm still growing, I'm still learning, so it would be nice to have some motivation to actually record more videos, if you will be interested. Okay, let's get to work now. So, as you may know, if you are a student, you can pick two choices to live abroad. We are talking about England. I'm going to talk about UK, how to find uh, the accommodation in the UK. So you can pick student accommodation or you can pick private rent. So what's the difference between them? Student accommodation is a place where university is owning the place or is partially owning so um or it might be contracted with the university so there are houses in university own uh, or there are specific buildings that university build and there are specifically for a purpose for students there will be no other person living in the halls um rather than just students keep that in mind whilst picking um accommodation uh it is important to know what do you want to get from the accommodation you're gonna live in? I personally was living three years in my undergrad in uh, in the un in the university student hall accommodation. So I had a floor with five girls. So I was the fifth one. There were five rooms, um, shared kitchen, but all of our all of us had their own bathroom. So it was ensued. Um, I I paid for that. Um, around 500 pounds per month um, so how did it work so um, I was paying only one rent um, for literally every single thing so I paid one rent one price for living costs for the building uh, for Wi-Fi for um, rubbish uh, for any waste so gas electricity water everything was included so I didn't have to worry about literally anything I paid one rent once a month and I was free-minded I had security 24 hours per 7 usually in student accommodations universities giving um, security or whether it is a physical security guard at the reception or is a security guard out on the phone you can call anytime and there is an emergency number so basically students are very safe in student accommodations if you're a first-year student and you're still shy about coming to new country or if you're an international student and you don't know anyone in here I would recommend coming and actually renting a student accommodation first you have the opportunity to actually meet many people from around the world and you will not be that lonely um, obviously second way is to rent a private a private rent private accommodation that can include renting from the agency or private landlord um, but obviously the price will be smaller sometimes it depends what you want again if you want just a room in shared house it's gonna be cheaper than student accommodation uh, but if you want a studio flat which means you will have your kitchen and bathroom for yourself then it will be more expensive um, again, it depends on your budget, it depends who are you as a person, if you are introverted, if you want to have everything to yourself, then feel free to um, rent a studio flat, which is, again, good good for you as a person but again it's it's not good for your pocket because it's pretty expensive to rent privately the room or a flat you have to find or agency or private landlord there are many websites you can do it from you can um if whenever you're you're moving into a a city or a town you can actually find different agencies you can um, walk through the town and see where the agencies are and you can ask around if anyone knows any agencies that are actually good because the most important thing is actually read the reviews from the agency at the beginning so when I was living in Luton we had many agencies that they didn't have really good um, reviews not many people were satisfied they were charging additional charges that they were not supposed to and it's good to take a look at how how much they are charging and what they are offering with the room are they offering cleaning once a week or once a month are they offering any additional services if anything breaks do you pay for it or the agency pays for it um small things like that small detail um find out at the beginning before signing the contract you can find a room 
whilst you're abroad and you're trying to move in um, but be mindful about how the room looks like um, you can auction you can actually ask the um, the private landlord to do a video tour of the room uh, so many times when I was trying to find a, a place to live I went to this room and I actually saw something different than I actually saw on pictures so the agency might use different photos um, of the room that are actually not the, f the pictures of the room so keep that in mind whilst choosing a room uh, agencies may lie and may um, actually use different photos uh, not the real ones of the room so keep that in mind what website I would recommend the first one could be if you're if you're picking student accommodation go first of all go to your university website whether it's University of South Wales University of Bedfordshire or Anglia Rask University go to their website and always they have their accommodation team where you can actually find many links of um, accommodation at the campus and outside the campus um, if the campus is small like it was in University of Bedfordshire where I did my undergrad we had only one uh, one on-campus um, accommodation so it was not much to, to pick from there wasn't the other one but it was a bit further um, it was out of the campus it was still in a town in still in town but not at the campus so take a look at what a university has on their website so I'll give you an example in University of Bedfordshire we had a website called the Campus Living Villages and through this website I could only book my room um, as a portal so it was um, student living villages portal where I have applied for the room obviously first come first serve so be quick when it comes to picking a room um, especially now when everyone else is applying and clearing is going through so keep that in mind that rooms are rapidly selling so if you got a conditional offer or unconditional offer try to book a room and pay the deposit to be secured to have a room actually if you want to live in student accommodation if you want to go privately if you want to find agencies uh, you can take a walk through your town through the, through the center or even on google maps if you're still abroad and you don't have anyone else um, in the UK to actually go to your town or give you any advice of where, which agency to pick from um, go on Google see where the agencies are easy way is actually to type um, private rent or private landlords in the in the city you are living so I'll give you an example uh, you can Google let's say rooms for rent for students Cambridge or rooms to rent University of Bedfordshire and there's gonna be a list of many websites you can actually check from another one could be right move or student pad beds um, they're always useful to check if you will not find anything satisfying on different websites uh, but your university if you get like a conditional offer they should email you saying that there are opportunities of renting in the campus on the campus um, and outside the campus they should provide you with links they should provide you with a student ambassador to help you with some stuff if you're a international or EU student who um, who is just confused about everything so don't be afraid to ask your university they do have people to help you if you need it um, also some some agencies and student accommodations they do require guarantor which is a person who is responsible uh, for paying rent if you will not be able to pay rent if that makes sense so the guarantor can be your parent can be your grandma someone from the family a friend um, can be anyone but it has to be someone to provide you with details and um, support if you will struggle as I said at the beginning applying as international student um, it's not much different than, than applying from the EU student perspective it's um, a very similar process although some um, agencies require a visa or some proof of residence um, EU students can do their pre-settlement status and that's pretty compulsory so do that if you're gonna come into the UK uh, but you have to be here to actually do the status international students need to have some right of documents as I said visas 
um, to prove that they can stay in England legally and study. So it's, again, it's important to take a look at what the agency is requiring. So every agency requires something different. Also, student accommodations require, again, something different. Different deposits, different payments, different set of payments. You can you can um, pick from paying um, three times a year or um, monthly payments, which I would recommend. Uh, but it's, again, it's up to you. How do you want to do it? Uh, but keep that in mind that some agencies may be lying to students. Be careful about them. Read reviews, read opinions and um, see what they are offering. So as a summary, you can have two choices as a student to, to actually pick your accommodation. You can pick private rent or student accommodation which I would recommend mostly if you are coming to a different country where you don't know anyone which would be actually useful for you to to meet new people and be surrounded by different people from different countries uh, which is an incredible experience from my experience I would tell you that actually living student accommodation is much better than um, living on your own but eh, it depends what is your preference if you have any other questions ask me in the comments below uh, but if you do have questions please take a look at your website first take a look at university website first and if you knew, if you cannot find anything there um, email university or there is like a specific chat box at every website university website thing that you can chat with ambassadors or someone responsible for the website that they um, ask them if they have anyone to help you um, online through online remotely um, or if you're here in England looking for a different accommodation right now um, ask if there's any help for you because it's quite important to actually ask someone who is there who is living in this city in, in this town yeah good luck with that um, hope you're gonna have really amazing time at the university and you're gonna pick the best accommodation possible so see you guys in the next video bye